Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our ISTQB AI tester certification. We are in chapter 6 getting started with it and this chapter is going to talk about the machine learnings, neural networks and testing. Of course neural networks are something most important to be interested about an ML model and that's what we are looking forward to explore in this particular chapter. So this chapter will be crisp and to the point and talking about two different segments under this chapter which is 6.1 which is of course neutral networks first and then 6.2 the coverage measures for the neural networks. So to get started today we're looking at 6.1 the neural networks for ML. All right, to get started, of course, uh, right here we have a beautiful picture of the neural network, which certainly looks like a neural system, which is our neuro in terms of brain as well. And they are very, very, uh, very, very complexly connected to each other. If you see here, of course, there are three major parts of it. Uh, we have got input neurons with through the input layer. We have output layer and we do have hidden layer. If you see the hidden layer, there are different connections. Um, each each node is being being connected to every other node uh, like one is to one one is to two one is to three and so on so if you see each and line each and every line very precisely you get to know that what exactly uh, the network we are talking about so artificial neural networks are initially intended to mimic the functioning of the human brain which can be thought as many connected biological neurons the single layer perceptron is one of the first examples of the implementation of an artificial neural network and comprises a neural network with just one layer that is single neuron. It can be used for supervised learning of classifiers which decides whether input belongs to a specific class or not. Now let me just try explaining you a bit about this. Number one thing. If you look at your neural schema of your own brain or human body system, you do understand that the nervous system is so connected to every single senses, every single part of the brain, that it senses any kind of, you know, behavior, any kind of, um, you know, touch, feel, sense, kind of, you know, uh, smell. All these sensors are pretty much connected to the brain, which immediately reacts. You have something called as a reflex action. That means everything is connected to every other part of the body which goes directly into our brain and that works very very significantly to the point right and if it stops working that's what you refer to as paralyzed and here exactly the same you are trying to replace a human mind with a machine and the machine certainly needs to have the similar type of connectivity with the network so that it can classify the right information out there so again referring to this information is all about letting you know that the neural network of the AI based systems or ML model certainly works the similar way how the human mind works so one or the other way we are trying to come up with a solution in a way that it gives you complete coverage of human minds replacement anyways that sounds really interesting but of course we need to look forward to more to get better hold of it and we are still in a research state of ai based system now most current neural networks are considered to be deep neural networks because they comprise several layers can be considered as multi-layer perception so you may find a basic system with single neuron or sometime you can find multiple layers or hidden layers which could be of multiple layers too between the input and output neurons to make a very very precise and very wise decision so in order to explain this particular diagram this is one of the deep neural network which is being explained to you which certainly comprises of three types of layers the input layer basically receives the input for example pixels from a camera the output layer provides the results to the outside world this might be for example, a value signifying the likelihood that the input image is a cat. Uh, now, between the input and output layers are, of course, hidden layers made up of artificial neurons, which are also known as nodes. Now, the neurons in one layer are connected to each of the neurons in the next layer, and they are there may be different numbers of neurons in each successive layer. So here, if you see, for example, and we have got uh, kind of like one, two, three, four, five. Uh, neurons in each layer 
under the hidden one but of course uh, i may have more than that as well depending on the type of complexity you are dealing with or type of content or data you are trying to judge also the neuron per neuron performs computations and pass information across the network from the input neurons to the output neurons to make the complete decision and give you the desired outputs well for the talking about the deep diving on the neural networks if you see if you zoom in or kind of like drill down this particular um, neuron network you would find that every single node is connected to every other node and that connectivity like inward to the next node is called as weight where the bias happens and then the output from a particular node is being referred to as activation value so let's try understanding this particular uh, and you know terminology and how exactly each node functions as required so the computation performed by each neuron except those in the input layer generates what is known as the activation value the value is calculated by running a formula which is the activation function that receives as input the activation values from all the neurons in the previous layer so all the neurons will give you activation value to a particular node and that will be collected together at one place the weights assigned to the uh, connections between the neurons which is referred to as network this is how the network learns and the individual bias of each neuron that means one node is telling that hey it's not me or this is not what exactly what I thought so there are for example each node can be referred to as a decision maker where every independent uh, node is trying to make their respective decisions that hey uh, is that a no it's not a is it B no it's not B is it C yeah, I think it's C, right? So one of the nodes will respond positive and other nodes will say negative and you compile all that data which said positive and you come up to the conclusion which is resultant, right? So note that this bias is present constant value or preset constant value and is not related to the bias considered earlier in our section 2.4. Running different activation functions can result in different activation values being calculated. These values are typically centered around zero and have a range of negative one, which is like disinterested to the positive one, which means very interested. When training the neural networks, each neuron is preset to a bias value and the training data is passed through the network with each neuron running the activation function to eventually generate an output. The generated output is then compared with the known correct result, which is labeled data which is used in form of supervised learning. The difference between the actual output and the known correct results is then fed back through the network to modify the values of the weights on the connection between the neurons in order to minimize this difference. That means the difference will be consistently fine-tuned. Again, going back to the workflow of the network uh, ML model, you understand that there is a cyclic, tight cyclic loop between training, evaluating, and fine-tuning. So that's what we are trying to say here in a very technical term that whatever the output difference we get, we try to collect that information and feed in again to make it more precise. As more training data is fed through the network, the weights are gradually adjusted as the network learns. Ultimately, the outputs produced are considered good enough to abort the training process. So at any point of time when you really realize that the model is able to decide very precisely or as per the expectation, you can go ahead and stop your training there and you can make a decision that this can go live now or this is what your desired expectation was. Well, that was all to talk from the 6.1 neural networks. Of course, we'll be covering more information about it in 6.2, but that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.